like artists. I like talking with artists. I like talking with people. I like exchanging ideas. I like seeing things as they happen. I like figure, fumbling my way through and figuring it out as I go. So yeah, um, first of all, how'd you get into art? Um, I have a, it's pretty basic. I started, I started, um, I started at university. I have studied art history. But you want to know, like, do you want to go in, like, pre-university? Yeah, I can go with you. Um, okay. So, at CEGEP, I took, uh, I took art history classes as, uh, what I perceived at the time, easy credit. And, um, there I, I kind of got the, got the bug. Um, at CEGEP Saint Laurent, and interestingly enough, Nicolas Mavrikakis, the art critic, mm -hmm. was my teacher at the time, which doesn't age him. All, I guess and uh, or me um, and uh, so from there I went I was initially supposed to go to history in university but because and all kinds of circumstances made it that I I started going I, I did I signed up in art history instead for as a major then transferred over to history then back to art history and blah, 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 blah. and I just more classes you take I took the more classes I took the more interested I became it's just that simple it was really through school it wasn't through any like museum experience it, or like visiting experience or knowing artists it was really through the academic side of things and from there I had to say something about Nicholas's uh, teaching yes it's, it was like so kind of it became gradual it was like a sort of fir first spark there and then from then on as I took more classes I became more interested so it was like he was the first teacher then there were many teachers since him like throughout that kept me in Kept me involved, kept me interested, kept me excited mm -hmm. about um, about art history. So it was really through uh, uh, like the, the faculty at University of Montreal um, that really like people like Joanne Lemoureux who really like and uh, um, you know at the, a lot of them aren't there anymore. But um, people like uh, Jean Francois Lotte and people like oh no, I think um, great um, architecture historian. Mm -hmm. uh, James Booth passed away. Anyways, it was all—all all these people really got me, kept me in. And then after that, uh, did you do an undergrad? Then you realize you do know what it, to answer the question. And my parents were like, "Well, what, what does an undergrad give you? Well, it gives you the opportunity to do a master's." So then I did a master's. And from the master's, I started working in uh, in an art gallery. And there are two. I was referred to uh, to this job by a professor as well, who was uh, Constance Norbert Rizer, who uh, referred me to the Belfair Gallery, where I started working, not knowing anything. At that time, I had taken no contemporary art classes. All my knowledge was, I might love 19th century and mid-century mid, 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 mid American art. Those were my two sort of things that I really enjoyed the most. And uh, working there uh, as a salesperson slash technician, slash McDonald's type employee mm -hmm. where you did we did everything it's like from the toilets to the installation in the Westmount homes it was to the high-end sales uh, six-figure sales and so on so we did it was a really great learning experience and uh, knowing from there I, I realized I never wanted to really work much in the art market uh, although I did become more involved with it from there um, it was great there actually one thing that was good is that I could work very little hours finish my master's and write on the side. So I did this great, there was this great gig at the time, you may remember this, it was the Montreal Plus dossier. Does it still exist? Yes. Well, at the time they had ogles of cash mm -hmm. and it was BCE I think who yeah. were behind it. And they were paying like so well for little what's happening mm -hmm. type things and they said let's do one with art and I had a friend who was working there on the, on the music side or film side, I forget which one he did, and he was like Dude, come on. So then I got to see like other galleries. I was working at Belfay, but I really wasn't involved in the, in the local scene at all. And that's how I got involved, is just by going there and introducing myself to dealers, to artist run centers, and to different people. And saying, I'm, I just, I give me a press release, what's this about? I have to write 200, 200 words on this thing, and it's going to be on Montreal Plus. Here's a link to the site. It's just a little promo piece. Uh, they were they, they called them reviews, but they weren't really reviews. They were just more sort of 
summarize yeah. what's happening and, and direct people towards the things you find are the most interesting in the city. So you picked, when you covered it, it means you liked it type of thing. There was no, no room for uh, criticism. Yes. Which is fine. Uh, so it was an exercise in writing, doing my master's at the same time, working at Bedfei, doing that, meeting people. Then I lose the job at Bedfei. Uh, two and a half years in, which was good to lose at that time, and uh, after that, I uh, I also lost the writing job because they cut that out. They realized they weren't getting any any traffic on those pages at all, so they they dropped it, and uh, which was fine as well. So I was kind of in between things, and then I I said, well, I've got this experience. People know me. Let's go knock on some doors again, and see if people need like uh, somebody to write a press release, somebody to write just a little basic little things, maybe I could start submitting things uh, freelance. So I went around and started meeting again uh, art dealers and uh, artist run centers. And from there, uh, somebody, Simon Blair, called me and said, you know, we'd like you to take over the AGAC, the uh, Association des Gagnants Contemporains. Um, I was the fourth director in two years at that point, I believe. I stayed there for, I don't even remember. Was it two and a half years again, or something like that? And uh, we tried to put to get some stuff off the ground. Uh, at that point, the membership was very little, low, and um, the financial situation was uh, dire. And then from there, I um, got a contract here at the Musée d'Art Contemporain, and that came about in an interesting way too. It was just by talking and listening to people. I don't know if you remember this uh, when the Calc had their um, their uh, Consultation, I forget what table, the table of the concertation du Conseil des Arts du Québec sur les arts visuels. It was a very large gathering where what was interesting with that position is the AGAC at the time, especially, was kind of a small, a small pickle. In, a, in it was a gherkin in a in a jar of pickles. And uh, but we were still con because we represented a sector, we were still invited to these things. So we got to meet a lot of interesting people through that, and to find out different realities. And I was a lot more interested in sort of different aspects of the art world than just you know my my, my job as a lobbyist was very specific. But I kind of was more interested in being more inclusive and being more. But it was which was fun, and um, uh, it was it was a good job in a way. Uh, and <laughs> and so so we get invited to this, and then you, and then that's how I found out about this job here, indirectly that they hadn't found anybody, in, after after it had been posted. Although I had I think applied for it right on time in July, and it and in October this consultation thing, and I found out that no, nobody had been hired, so I came knocking on this door, um, and said you know all I I, and I just called the director and I asked him how. This was Mark. It was Mark at the time said, oh, hey, so apparently you haven't filled out that position. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I know I said that, and I realized you had applied, and da-da-da-da. I said, well, listen, I know that I don't have a lot of curating experience. I've done a few shows, and I had done you know, a few small shows of friends and independent spaces, and rented a space, and well, at the time you could rent a space in the Belgo for just one month, and, and uh, done that with some friends and stuff like that. I said, well, listen, just all I add, like, just give me an interview. It's an hour or whatever. And see, take it from there. I said, see, so what? Like, you've got nothing to lose and possibly everything to gain. You have an hour to lose, <laughs> and possibly a great deal to. So the interview, I so he said, sure, fine. And they booked it, and I did the interview, and it was a it was a contract. So I said, it's a contract. I mean, you're not. He's like, yeah, 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 whatever. And so uh, I don't think he said that exactly, but it was, uh, yeah. And then then I got did the interview, and that was a really, I was a I was a heady interview for something that was a replacement contract. Because somebody was on sabbatical, Gilles Godbev was on sabbatical, and when I started working here, I took over one of his projects, um, a Guy Van Air exhibition, and uh, then he, over the holidays, that this was in the fall of 2006, and over the holidays, he, he had tendered his, res his resignation, uh, that he wasn't coming back from sabbatical. So I reapplied to my position and got it, and then was on probation for a year, and then became regular staff from then on. So I was hired, I got in here in October 2006, and I've been in here since then.